a Texas Frightener weekend at an undisclosed location, and we have abducted four guests to talk to us and Little Spark Films about uh, their experience torturing souls, uh, uh, writing entertaining stories, and shooting short films. So with us today, we have the fabulous author Barbie Wilde, <laughs> author and director Nicholas Vince. Hi. Actor Simon Banford, who keeps a painting in his house that keeps getting old as he says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know this isn't an undisclosed location. It's actually my hotel room. <laughs> and I've invited you all in. Welcome. Yeah. It was undisclosed. It was. <laughs> <laughs> and, and someone who recently stepped into the shoes of a very striking hell priest uh, for the latest installment of Hellraiser Judgment, Paul yes. T. Taylor. Yes. Uh, well, thank you. So nice. <laughs> So we've had a pleasure of talking to all of you before in the Barker cast, and, uh, and this is a dream come true for myself to be able to do this, this sort of uh, conversation with you guys today uh, with Ryan uh, Dan Hauser, my co-host. Uh, so I've been thoroughly entertained by your written work, I've been seduced by your characters on the screen, and I've been charmed by your generosity and candor. So thank you very much for being with us today. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> 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 so, so, so uh, yeah. Is that it? Then we finished. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you had a big screen screening of Hellraiser that uh, just was last night. Yes. Did, did you yes. make it eventually? No. Oh. I, I had to give my ticket away because I was stuck in San Antonio waiting for the waiting. A duck went into the engine in my plane. Oh no! And they You're spent kidding. they spent a whole bunch of time scrubbing the duck out of the out of the yeah. engine. Yeah. Front of mine, poison sauce. <laughs> <laughs> but they so, were very clever. They put the cucumber through. Yeah. And yeah. They just kind of sliced it all up. So they're like, bits. your new arrival time is ten forty-five. Oh. Oh. Right. So yeah, unfortunately. Uh, Damn ducks! I know. Yeah. Stupid yeah. animals. Didn't, didn't, yeah. didn't, you said, it's, you, you said a duck a duck was ruining Hellraiser at one point. That's right. right yeah, yeah, that's right. In the in the old Plural. duck ponds. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the I remember this story, somebody telling me this story. Yeah, the duck ponds outside of Cricklewood Production Village on Harris One, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, they just kind of get a serious scene done, and they be just... <laughs> <laughs> and then, mysteriously, one night, they all disappeared from the duck pond. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. So it was like Danny DeVito from, from, uh, from Batman Returns was outside of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, I, I my my duck's call sounded much more like Danny DeVito. Didn't it? <laughs> so how was it like for you guys to get together for the screening? You guys did a panel, right? Yeah, we did. It we was we fun. did a panel after being up twenty six hours, yeah. and uh, two well. Barbara well, Doug was okay. He just had to come from Pittsburgh. <laughs> oh, yeah. But we were all well, kind of tired. Yeah. And, Barbie and, and I had two glasses of wine and a and a, and a, and a martini. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we only had one glass of wine and a martini. And you were able to talk them into well, moving. You had two, had two glasses, glasses of wine and a martini and 26 mm -hmm. hours without sleep. And it went right. surprisingly well. It did. But you did get them to move the Q&A to before the movie instead of after. Yeah. 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 So I think it was just Otherwise about it would have been insane. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's something called yeah. self-preservation. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah. I think by the time it would have gotten out, it would have been sort of like six in the morning. Oof. And that's ugly oh. for no. people like us. It was highly entertaining. I yeah, stayed for the movie. After the though, film, like and then if we did a QA, a it would have been about 12 <laughs> yeah. one. one in the morning. We were there at 1 Here, time. here. Yes. Yeah. Oh, 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 so now that Hellraiser celebrated its 30th anniversary mm -hmm. and had screenings not only at the British Film Institute but all over the world, um, it seems like for a former video nasty, uh, it finally has been uh, earned its place in the pantheon of British no, film, right? it's never officially a video nasty. No? Video nasty is a term that was introduced by the British press. Okay. And there was a list of videos which were video nasty. And Mary Whitehouse. And Mary, yeah. Yes, yeah, the British press and Mary Whitehouse. Um, is this so, an American equivalent of Mary Whitehouse? Do you know who Mary Whitehouse is? Well, she was a, a she campaigner was a for, for moral, um, moral decency. decency. Oh yeah, yeah. you've yeah. heard email in But I actually yeah. think a friend of mine, Star. Tim Dry, who was the monster in Extra, uh -huh. Extra was considered a video nasty. Really? So yeah. I don't Tipper know Gore, actually, actually. Tipper Gore was, Tipper Gore? Re was yeah. really big into uh, putting label, like warning labels on, on music and that's why we have warning yeah. explicit lyrics now. Yeah. Yeah. I actually see that, that, trying to get on topic, that the, 
<laughs> but I've always regarded in, in many ways uh, Hellraiser and Hellraiser 2 as, as almost like art cinema mm -hmm. because of A, Clive's sensibilities as an artist and the, the beauty that was put into the design of, of the Cenobites. I mean, they are exquisite in a sort of hideously gory, wonderful way and uh, very unusual. And of course, the, the lament configuration is just this extraordinary thing. This is not your normal video nasty with a guy with a chainsaw running through the forest chasing a girl in a boot tube with the leathers. These are, you know, <laughs> as I, I said last night, these are monsters that talk to you. They're, they're, they have sensibilities beyond, you know, ripping and slashing. And it was also, I mean, beyond even those, the beauty of the house of the decaying house that they walk mm. into at the beginning with mm. the little mm. icons that they find on the table and the cockroaches and the beetles running over them. There's, yeah. Yeah. there's like so sound much art. Yeah. The religious iconography. Yeah. 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 But yeah. see, this is yeah. why the film has resonated through the years with people and they say, oh well, let's just watch Hellraiser and Pinhead. And they watch it and they realize it's more than just yeah. that. It also is about the human monsters of Julie and Frank and, and sexual obsession and all the other weird desires that the Cenobites promise. It's it has so many different levels. It's it's kind of beyond your normal horror, yes. which is why I think people are still very impressed with it. And also, if you go to places like Deviant Art and all oh, the other art, um, pin, not pin interest, but art station. Yeah, these are you know yeah. all the art, all the tattoo work, mm -hmm. all this extraordinary Exquisite. things that were inspired by this idea from Clive, and that's yeah. what makes it more than just, I think, an Run of the mill horse. But certainly, a lot, a lot of the mainstream media these days have kind of picked up on the 30th anniversary. There was there was articles oh. in the Guardian and yeah, the Times. Yeah, and that's yeah. Nice. Kind of mainstream newspapers. They would have never touched it when right. the film came right. out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I remember a very embarrassing days. moment. It's about my death scene moment, um, and I had to walk around all day long with that. Can I Tentacle. say this? Channard's penis tentacle glued to my <laughs> vagina throat, right? Yeah. Yes. And walking around all day, and the that was nothing to do with the film, though. That was just yeah. <laughs> yeah. that was just Jeff oh trying to torture God. me. But that was at the same time I was doing film review for ITV, mm -hmm. late night film review, and my hero was Barry Norman, and they got Barry down because he hated the first film, and they said why they thought he would somehow melt. If he made, oh, let's just go on the set and see Hellraiser 2. But he was sort of wandering around in his trench coat, and I saw my hero, mm -hmm. and I hid behind some boxes. Oh. <laughs> and they I'll, kidnapped him. They yeah, kidnapped the story him. goes that they locked him in like a, 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 an office yeah. and asked him like, "Why are you doing this? Why, Why did are you, you give us such a bad review yeah. on the first film? It's British horror. Why are you trashing it?" Oh, like he that? did yeah. introduce his uh, his review on the first film, but with the word. Some people think that Clive Barker is a genius. I have many people who, you know, friends who res I respect who mm -hmm. think that Clive Barker, but I don't. I, you know, you know, oh, oh he that. said that. Yeah. Ooh, spanking for Barry. Yeah. Actually, he's dead now. Yeah. So. Well, and speaking of the 30th anniversary, we should be coming up on the Hellbound 30th anniversary now, right? I mean, it's oh, yeah. just yeah. 2018. So. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's I that's hope that we can see the same amount of, of, uh, of celebration for Hellbound. That, but do you know yeah. what I think is really adorable is that so many people come up and say, well, it's actually made lists of being, as horror sequels go, of being right up mm, there. Yes. What good, good horror sequel. I mean, it is a direct thing like, you know, Quantum of Solace is a direct follow on from, <laughs> you know, um, Casino Royale, in, in that it's the events are happening right a few uh -huh. In moments later. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. like Halloween too. Yeah. And yeah. also people like the idea there's a bit more delving into the background of the characters and finding out what's yeah. what the poop is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tend to consider LA that Spencer. as kind of a double feature for me. Yeah. Usually if I see yeah. the first, yeah. I see yeah. the second one. Yeah. Yeah. You know. yeah. And you get to see yeah. where they're from. I mean, you'd never get to see that again in, 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 the, in the sequels after that. Yeah, and also you've got some true. killer lines. Nothing personal, baby. You know, yeah. Stuff. <laughs> Yeah. So, so have you noticed the revival thanks to this Arrow 2K restoration and uh, all these screenings and the 30th anniversary? Has there been a, a has it impacted your convention experiences with the fans? Have you noticed a I'm revival? Very luckily, been invited to introduce two screenings now of the 35 mil print, which I wow. have, which they've been in the UK, which they've let uh, out. Uh, one in the Prince Charles Cinema last year in the Cinema which first screened Hellraiser, 
uh, a couple of days before its major release. Is that the Prince Charles? The Prince Charles in Leicester Square. <laughs> it always we shows really dodgy films. Two, two, you know, <laughs> two to three days to the day before, you know, 30 years later. Not to be confused and with then, Prince Albert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, recent down in Bournemouth. And, uh, Talking of pleasure from pain. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think, you know, it's, I think the fact that you, the whole, there is a whole thing now of screening 35 mil prints uh, yeah. of the classic films. So like 2001 now, the yeah. unrestored version that's been screened, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, the, uh, the offer brought you all together with Ken Cranham, uh, yes. who you hadn't yeah. worked with uh, since Hellbound. Uh, yeah. and, and Ollie Smith. And Ollie Smith. And Ollie Smith. Smith. Absolutely. Skin is Frank. Yes. Yep. Uh, so how fun was that? I, I'm very happy that The Dark Ditties is going to keep moving forward with uh, two extra chapters, uh, Mrs. Wiltshire and Finders Keepers. How's it been working with Dead Mouse Productions? Because it seemed like they're really enthusiastic, talented people. Well, of course, they did the Leviathan documentary. Right. And so we got to know all the guys there. And then they said, listen, can I send you, you know, can I send you scripts? And, and but, you know, every, all the other Cenobites were in it. I went, well, I'll have to, I'll have to do it, you know. <laughs> but the script was great. I hadn't acted in 17 years, so mm -hmm. I was beside myself. And, um, but I thought, wow, you know, dead on page 18. Got some good lines, <laughs> but, um, and it doesn't it doesn't spoil it actually because it's sort of the way it's set up to tell them what it is kind of thing. But I thought this is good. I can do this. You know, it was a nice easing back into into the profession, and um, but it, it's it's enormous amount of fun, and people are acting with panache and and um, and the the. It's good words. <laughs> Great um, words. Yeah. And, but also the special effects are fabulous. And the set mm -hmm. was amazing. And the writing was wonderful. It's won a screenplay award. Um, Neil Nick Morris. Neil Morris, yeah. 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 Neil Morris. Uh, and so it's, 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 a, it's a fine start. And I think the, um, you know, I think the ultimate aim is to, to have some kind of TV series. Yeah, that'd be fun. wonderful. So mm. but they're just, just doing them and seeing if they can sell them and the, the quality is I've seen little bits of an, another one and it's absolutely magnificent and, and uh, yeah. Simon got to have a little earpiece over his ear but the Bluetooth thing Aww. even though your phone didn't work yeah, <laughs> yeah still trying to get it to work and you still keep it on <laughs> and I got to re re um, revise that character again for the second episode Jonathan Brooke Davis came it was kind of it was set before the first one oh so um, setting up the story of why Not he was really. there. He was just in it. Oh, okay. a, lot, a lot of the characters kind of cross over and interlink um, from episode to episode. They're planning six episodes in all. Wow. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Huh. We finished number two, which is Mrs. Wiltshire. Number three, we're filming at the end of this month. Whoa. Which is, and each of the stories are completely different, but with crossover characters and actors and things. Number four, hopefully Bob and Nick will be back on, which is a, a kind of race with the devil type. Mm -hmm. Story line. Oh, only if I can drive. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you heard of Mad Max? Now there's Bad Barbie. Bad Barbie. I was going to men mention kidding. what happened in Nicholas Vince's character, but now I don't want to spoil it. Either. No. Yeah. yeah. It, it was it was shocking. It was there was some yeah. there was some um, yeah there was some interesting death scenes. Yeah. Oh my that. gosh. It was great fun. Uh, it's actually a question. I don't know because I've just done another one, um, uh -huh. and it's like. I get rather disturbed seeing myself dead. Oh, and yes. Yeah, and the way, the, the way that you were killed. Yeah, right? yeah, but it's like yeah. the, the, somebody else did a wonderful job. So you it. died in the film you just filmed? Yes, yeah, spoilers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, it, 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 it's just, actually, it's quite difficult to watch yourself go through. Mm. If I, I was listening to um, uh, the Hellbound Heart, the audio play of the Hellbound, yeah. Hellbound yeah. Heart, which we That's recorded good. recently. Mm -hmm. So it was me sitting on the train, cheerfully listening to myself play a sleazy businessman. Yeah. And then suddenly it goes, you know, oh, oh, oh well, no, that's not nice. And then like, <laughs> it's not like I didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. No, it's very strange. I was yeah. wondering if you... You were immersed in the story. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm always fascinated by how actors, I've never had to, to die. Well, I did. No, but it wasn't me on the floor. It was yeah, the too. roulette bit. Oh, wait, that wasn't, that wasn't, that wasn't me. You. Yeah, that wasn't you. Um, oh. But it's just that, that there's a, a scene in L.A. Confidential when Kevin Spacey is shot uh, by um, Dudley, his mm -hmm. lieutenant, and he makes the light go out in his eye. 
And then, but he's laughing to Rolo Tomasi. And that's it. It's, uh, it is over. so we. I yeah. actually had to go back and watch it again in the cinema because wow. I thought, how did he do that? It's just he defocused his eye. Yeah. But yeah. it was just so extraordinary it's it, how people, things. you know. Yeah. We were talking. We were talking it. earlier about kind of learning the techniques and things of filming and how you never, you never really stop. You it's it, especially coming things. from a theater background because mm. they're so different. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is what yeah. you were talking about last night, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. It's, it's just trying to. It's a whole new technique that you have to learn. And, and it never, you never stop because every project is completely different. Have you and ever no seen rehearsal. Michael's... No, Michael, no rehearsal. Michael Caine did a brilliant master class on film acting. And if this was years ago. And we're not talking about Hellraiser right now. We're talking about Michael Caine. But <laughs> I'd like him to... Michael, you, I, we'd love, I'd love you to be in my Zulu Zombies. <laughs> um, <laughs> right Zulu Zombies. Yeah. Oh, he would be good. I know, exactly. <laughs> He's done Zulu. Yeah. The best yeah. thing ever to I, do Zulu Zombie. I wow, I get that sort of for you, Bobby. You can. Yeah. Do you know his agent? <laughs> <laughs> I read his book on acting. It's on the concert. Yeah. It simplifies it, and it's beautiful. Yeah. Uh huh. So, so Paul, how was your experience last night doing the panel? Uh, I heard you it were pretty a, active. It was a trip. Well, <laughs> and I'm, you got to meet you met Doug Bradley and. Uh, yes, we were in the bar waiting. Luckily, nothing exploded. And, and everyone, <laughs> everyone arrived. And you I guys just didn't tear yourselves apart. It, it, it wow, was just, it was, it was surreal and fabulous. And, of course. and you know, this has been this weekend is start started out with such a. An energy. energy that's, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm sure I'll have a depression at the end of the weekend. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Hopefully not. How, how do you like how joining, you joining the Cenobite family? How do I? How do you like joining the, the Cenobite family? It's the coolest thing that's <laughs> yeah. ever happened to me. I mean, oh. seriously. It is. It is. I, I yeah. saw the movie yeah. in 87. I never imagined that I would ever be in, uh, play one of those monsters, you know? I mean, it was just, uh, and, uh, and Pinhead was just, as everyone knows, just, Sexy and beautiful and dangerous and smart and uh, all that again. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so I was <laughs> doing that for myself. But, 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 you know, I mean, never expected this to happen, and so it's 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 so far it's been a wonderful trip, and and getting to go to conventions is completely new to me, and. Mm -hmm. And if I shot the movie over two years ago, so then I had to wait for two years for it to come out. Oh, yeah. gosh. Yeah, that so that was kind of agonizing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was, it's Dimension Films, which is Weinstein's, yeah. and so I, I don't know, you know, it, who knows what's up, yeah. Yeah. if it would have ever come out. I think somebody's just happened. bought the company now, but it might be just one of those I wouldn't be surprised. engulf and destroy type. I don't you know. know. I know that the franchise. Pretty Woman, Richard Gere and Pretty Woman, the thing that he did. They were looking <laughs> for a lifeline from an investment group, but I think it failed, so it now did, they were yeah. actually bankrupt. And yeah. I'm guessing Auctioning. someone's going to auction the library and stuff, so we don't know what's yeah. going to happen to Hellraiser. With the, oh, with wow. Hellraiser being I up thought, in the air, what would be everybody's. I thought Disney bought you know, the whole thing. Would, would they get the rights back? Because they, um, they, Buena Vista used to. It's complicated. The, the Hellraiser yeah, rights after the third one became a mess, mm -hmm. and then around the fourth one, there was Transatlantic Entertainment that owned it, and then they, they went under, and then they sold it to someone else. And I have to make a blog post about all that, because I have a bunch of like links and, and articles about it. So, my, what were you going to ask? Oh, what would, what would be everybody's, what would you, everybody like to see in the future of Hellraiser, because now it's kind of up in the air. We don't. Well, hey, as in hey, production if, company. If Disney or? have got it, I'd love to see the Disney version. <laughs> <laughs> I think the new Disney version. Disney Pixar. New Disney villain. Bill Bambi. Female Cenobite, Disney princess. Yes. Hellraiser the musical. Hellraiser the opera, I think, is the one that I'm really crying out. But I remember Doug talking about this a decade, at least a couple of decades. Decades ago, and yeah. he, he always imagined it. You know, just well, the it is set would be the box, and just you know, start with that. The whole Julia the, is a diva. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. They, did, yeah. they did have the, the stage rights. There was a big um, production company in London that were going to put it on as a play rather than a, a musical version. Oh. And they had got as far as as creating. They had a set designed for it, where it started with the puzzle box, kind of this, this vast puzzle box, rotating in the middle of the stage as the audience came in. Oh, and wow. then, as the play opened, the box opened into the house, 
and into the rooms, and each room was on oh, hydraulics. Oh, great idea. That were going to come yeah. out, so you could get the close-up. They come right out over the audience, so uh, you could get the close-up of the things. Wow. And they, they had uh, like blood pipes built into the walls, so when she hit him over the head, they could really get the kind of the gush of the blood wow. coming out of his skull. Yeah. So they got in. They spent a lot of money on it, but. Uh, I think it was the same time Carrie was being put on at the National or the RSC. Right, right. They did a live version of Carrie? I don't yeah. remember that. It's a beautiful musical. Mm. I mean, it was rewritten from oh, the 70s, right? Oh, of course, musical. Right? Yeah. Rewritten, and it's better now, but Carrie's a musical. I think I have it's a awesome. songbook for that. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I found it online once, the wow. entire songbook for the Carrie Give musical. Give me that bucket of piss <laughs> blood. <laughs> <laughs> I get a squash. <laughs> I had a casting notice uh, a couple of days ago. They're doing Grinder the opera. Ah! Which is, that's, I actually saw. Yeah, really, I saw. Really. An, I saw a musical about Ernest Hemingway, uh -huh. and I joked and said, "Are they going to have a song going? Get that shotgun, stick it in my butt, oh, get it blow my head up, and my music is gone." And you know what? There was he had the ode to his shotgun song. That oh wasn't far off from what I just said. I think it was actually one of the top terrible musicals. That, yeah, that something you know, shouldn't be a musical. Uh -huh. yeah. Something they just don't they lose mess. whatever they were. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's not a trivial. I mean, I don't. You know, it's an interesting art form, but I don't think it's a necessarily a trivialization mm -hmm. of a great author and his sad death. But I think this pretty much was a trivialization of a great author. And mm -hmm. I shouldn't say that actually, because I I know the playwright, but he was just he was just doing his job. But I think it's it's an interesting thought. It's just you know. But again, that's sort of. Paul, what sort of feeling came inside you when you saw yourself for the first time in costume on a mirror as, as the hell priest? Okay. Well, it's, 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 it's not just one thing. I mean, it's sort of a process. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. You're not just, it's not like they do your makeup and you're facing away from the right. mirror. Then they go, ta-da, you know. So, <laughs> uh, so, plus, having seen the first several movies, you know, of course, I know basically what I'm going to look like. So... Mm -hmm. But getting there, I mean, I don't see well, and I didn't have my contacts in, so I couldn't even really see the mirror, which pr probably was maybe a good thing. I'm not sure. But I didn't really get a chance to look at myself till I was alone in the trailer, waiting, mm -hmm. um, in the costume. With uh, We put the contacts in last, right before I went on. But it was just, it was, to use a word that's possibly overused, surreal. It was mm -hmm. truly surreal because... I was joining this pantheon of of horror that that was. T I don't even think I know how much is behind it. I mean, hearing you guys talk, I don't even think I realize w what is everything that's behind. Sure, it's all Clive Barker's writing, all of it. Um, but it was just such a trip. But the th the fact is, in 1987, when I saw Hellraiser. I fell in love with Pinhead. He became instantly my favorite horror icon. Right. And because of everything I've already said to describe him. And um, it's so weird how the universe works. I mean, that's what came to me 30 years later was that role. I mean, I love horror and I always have. And I've always been sort of um, a bit like the Cenobites and especially perhaps Pinhead mm -hmm. in that the suffering is... Someplace I go, sometimes I put myself through it for strange, mentally ill reasons. But it's just sort of, um, and yet I love, the thing is, I've loved playing a monster since I was a kid. Uh -huh. Halloween was the one time of the year when I could be scary, grotesque, and unrecognizable. Mm -hmm. and, and it was you, okay to do so. And it was okay to do and so. people wouldn't look at you funny. Right. Yeah. And <laughs> I, I totally loved get it. it. Yeah. I loved it so much. <laughs> I mean, I grew up in the middle of Kansas, so mm -hmm. it was not you know, in a very conservative upbringing. So getting to do that, and then 30 years later becoming this monster was just, it's the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. So the first time I saw myself, it was just, what? And it was yeah. a different design, uh -huh. which I love that it was a different design. Sure. And, um, so sort of my hell priest, even though I had to play homage to the first two, two dogs, of course. Sure. But, um, but I yeah. think you, you managed to turn it into your own character and uh, and judgment. So Thank I really you. enjoyed the movie. Thank it's, you. It has old Stygian Inquisition. It was uh, yeah. a great concept yeah. by Gary Tunnicliffe. So I really enjoyed that movie. It did have a lot to do with the script. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, I went where Pinhead was, and then went, you know. So certainly, never no wise crack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So Barbie, I was wondering because um, I know that unfortunately Chris Alexander has suffered a bit, a bit, a little loss in the family. But uh, yeah. I was wondering what's the status on Blue Eyes, the project that was announced some time ago. Well, he's actually um, he's what's happened. The reason why there's been a bit delay, he's he's had some films he's had to mm -hmm. produce under contract, and he's working, I believe, on the last one, which is Space Vampire, mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the lovely Ali Chapel, who's also going to be our Blue Eyes. And Nivik with it's all the casting is that Nivik Ogre is playing Geezer, and there may be one other cast announcement, but I, I'm not quite sure, so I just want to make sure it's it's going to happen before we announce it. Um, but th that's that's the only it's, hey, it's independent film, and, right. and also getting the finance together so we, we can do the special effects, which are um, probably a bit more than what he normally does because he's I mean he did have female werewolf of course, but you know it's, it's vampires it's like gets you know. Yeah, it's um, slightly easier than sort of slight this cosmic events that might be happening in, okay. in Blue Eyes. Because I, I, the last update mentioned to, the production was starting in Toronto last November. Yeah, yeah. And so there uh, has been delays, okay. and also because of personal circumstances. Right, right. Him, and too. so you've written the story. What can you tell us about it? Because well, Chris it's, Alexander described it as as if Clive Barker made life force by the way of necromantic. It's really <laughs> fascinating. It's got a good science fiction undercurrent to it, but it's really a slice of a larger story. It was called Beauty and the Scowl, mm -hmm. and it was a crime story, and I was going to turn it into a novel about serial killer who killed women. But basically it's about this homeless guy, and it's, it's sort of quite rich, his background and stuff, and he's got this shopping trolley or car, and he goes into this alleyway, and he he sees this blanket and he goes, whoa, that's really cool, a blanket, you know, and he's tugging it out, it's wrapped around the body and he mm -hmm. unwraps it, oh, it's no. this beautiful girl, fresh, sounds a little bit like hamburger that's been wrapped in cellophane for uh -huh. too long, and he's like going, well, she's not going to mind, and he hasn't done anything in a long time and she's so beautiful and sexy and <laughs> and he falls in love with her right and he gives her a name to give her a bit of personality and uh. then and then he, he tries to wrap her up but he can't do the knots oh. right and you know he doesn't want a rat to get at her beautiful face right. and then because she's been killed by a serial killer yes. and then Maybe he Michael tries Faraday. to find that's a story and that was he was gonna get his friends and then we were gonna find out who's killing all these beautiful oh, okay. girls but then um, I had to come up with a short horror story, and I thought I was really the down to the wire with the um, the deadline. And I thought, well, maybe I could use the, like a bit of geezer and turn it into something weird. And with most of my stories, I just start writing, and you know, I'm I just follow my instincts. And what happened <laughs> when he found the body in the forest instead? Because I had to. It was for an anthology called Green and Pleasant Land. Mm -hmm. And um, it was it was kind of it just took this really weird horrific turn, and um, so it uh, I, I suppose you know the atmosphere of the Scarlett Johansson film Under the Skin right. it's very uneasy the feeling mm -hmm. and this beautiful woman driving around doing all this stuff and who is she what is she, and I think that what I like to do uh, is have strong female elements in, in a lot of my stories. Mm -hmm. And that's why, even though she's dead, she she's still, a, still mm -hmm. vibrant and doing stuff. Yes. And but maybe she's not dead, and I right. don't really want to say anymore. Right. But that's where the supernatural gets in this. Yeah, movie. and and because Chris has always been a huge um, supporter of my work, he said I really want to make a movie of this story. I sent it to him because I knew he would love it. It was part of his sensibilities, and he's he came up with a script and his ideas that he's put in. So we're collaborating on the script. And it's just, it's so one, it's like a, a mind meld, yeah. it's a Star Trek thing, mm -hmm. of, of people who sort of like the same kind of, of horror. Yeah. And it's it's going to have some shocking elements in oh, it. I'm sure. But yeah. also it's a story about a man who's just, you know, he's an alcoholic and he's just hit rock bottom and right. is there any way he can ever come up? And it's, it's the, I love the character of Geezer. Mm -hmm. As a friend of mine said so eloquently when I sent her the original story, Poor geezer, looking for love in all the wrong yeah. places. You know? <laughs> so that's where it is. And we're, as soon as he's finished these certain projects, and obviously, you know, range of personal circumstances he's right. dealing with at the moment, will be. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the production that. Production yeah, phase yeah. of that. Mm -hmm.
And speaking of movies, uh, uh, Nicholas, you directed your first short, The Night Whispered. Um, uh, available on Real House. I available got on Real House, yes. I, I saw all the extras and all the stuff. I love dogs. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's about three friends that missed the last tram home and walked yeah. through a dark country park. Mm -hmm. And uh, uninvited, a sinister gentleman and his dog join them. Mm -hmm. As they walk, one hears a whisper, turns, and vanishes. And then I'm not going to say anything else. Yeah. But um, are you looking to direct again soon? In fact, I've done two more short films since then. Oh, time. okay. In fact, one of them's screening tomorrow night. Oh. Uh, here at Texas Fright Now. Your Appraisal. Your Appraisal. Uh, yeah, that's my second short film. And then I've got a third one that's going to be part of a horror anthology called For We Are Many. Mm -hmm. um, which is a theme and one, and uh, which is we just mm. need to re redo some stuff. It's like all these things, you know, you're like, yeah, that's great. Oh, we've got the feedback. Okay, we're going to rethink. Okay, we'll redo that. Okay, we'll do something slightly right. different. So, yeah, I, I, uh, I've done some other good stuff as well. So, I really enjoy doing it. It's very interesting. I was reading um, the program for Texas Fright Night. Mm -hmm. I've got a quotation from Matthew Lillard. He says, You know, whenever I direct, I do it with energy because I love energy. And I thought, Yeah, it's very true. If you're trying to encourage people to do. Um, I mean, the big joke on uh, not so much the night whispered, um, which is been done very well, but on your appraisal is the mm. fact that when we were filming it, I'd be sitting there going, oh, <laughs> and Paddy, who was my, uh, Paddy Murphy, who was my first AD, just look at said, Nick, you wrote this. I said, I know, but it's my mate Dawson there. And it's right. like, you know, it's different when it's there in front, mm. and you've got it in your head. Who's also in the Night Whisper, right? Oh, he's also, yeah, Dawson, yeah, yeah. who's also, yeah, he's a great mate of mine, so I use him as much as possible and just torture him right. fairly <laughs> frequently. And you're, all, you're you've been, very prolific. I mean, you're currently playing. You're currently part of three shorts in post production, right? They're playing Brian and Heckle. Uh, you are Jonas Feature. in Book of Monsters. Feature. And you're Ronald Goodman in Fuck You Immortality. Can <laughs> yes. you tell us a little Feature. bit about yeah. <laughs> the Feature films? Not short films. Okay. They're all yeah. Oh, the wow. cameo. I've got small. I've got Wonderful. cameo roles. I've just been doing uh, one days here and there. Um, Book of Monsters is brilliant. Uh, mm -hmm. I haven't seen any of it, but the script is wonderful. They, uh, this is where they did a Kickstarter campaign, and if you contributed to the Kickstarter, then you got to choose monsters and deaths oh, and yeah. oh, provenance, pit, oh, you know, biblical plot moments in it, and so. On. And I thought, okay, so you've got a script. You've got. You're just going to drop it. You know, it's, it's like it'll just. And they read the whole thing, you know the whole story. I said, no, actually, it is like make your own adventure depending on how the votes went. Then it changed the film, it changed the script. So everybody who's, so I'm really, and I spent a fabulous day working with those uh, yeah. guys. And then I spent a day in Italy filming Fuck You, Immortality, it was brilliant. Talk about chewing the scenery. Uh, that character was <laughs> super, it was great. And it was just, again, fascinating to work with an Italian crew because they don't say roll. The you know, camera rolling sound is that you know, you have motore, azione. Um, and try to work, oh, yeah, that's what I've got to do. That. Uh, uh, so, so, yeah, I've been very lucky. And then Heckle, that's what I was filming literally just before I came out. Um, and again, it's a really interesting script. I've just been very lucky recently that I've got the, these parts have just come my way. And you're also going to be in uh, another uh, chapter of Dark Ditties, right? I am going to be in, I don't know what it's called yet. Simon okay. knows more about it than I do. Right. I don't know the title of number four. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, I think, I think it's probably still, we haven't been asked yet. Oh, yeah, I haven't anyway. So, okay. you know, I'm sure it's just, uh, you will. I hope we will. But, um. <laughs> and I particularly enjoy the extras in The Night Whispered, where you went through all this effort to explain how movies are made and how, you know, what sort of software you used uh, to write the script. Thank you. And how to do the previous visualizations and how to set all those uh, uh, interesting shots. Well, yeah, because I think I really wanted, you know, you get, I, I love DVD extras. It's a great way of learning how to make movies. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they, they, that's what I really like about them. That's where I learned a lot about the techniques and just watching all the, you know, the, the big budget feature films. And, and I thought, it actually, it'd be really nice just to do something for a short film. Mm -hmm. Just say, you know, this is what I went through. This is the whole thing from beginning to end. Um, finding, getting shots and how things change. Even, even on a six-page short film, you have ideas, and then it just doesn't come right. You can't get the location. You can't get the cast, right. you, et cetera. And then they um, move the light post. and <laughs> Yeah, or, you know, or whatever it is. You know, it, yeah. It, 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 yeah, absolutely. And again, it's those happy accidents and... and 
it's Roger Corman style filmmaking, right. basically. You know, he, Roger Corman famously said that he didn't go to film school. You can watch his film school. Mm -hmm. He just went out no, and made yeah. movies. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was you know, my reason for doing it, basically. Which I felt, I've been talking to all these people on my YouTube show, all these wonderful independent mm -hmm. filmmakers, and I thought, I should really have a go. But yeah, the, the, the DVD extra was yeah. good fun. So I have a question for uh, both Nicholas and Simon, is that uh, you, when you were in school together, you did a play called Spring Awakening, <laughs> right? Can you tell us a little bit well, about a, that? Let's clarify, this is drama school, this is not school school. Time at the time there was a play uh, called Romans in Britain yes. was on at the National Theatre. I remember that. And it had kind of well, uh, a lot of nudity and buggery. And buggery. And funnily enough, bringing Mary Whitehouse back up, our, our, our local British censor at the yeah. time, she was trying to get it banned, and all the guts of press were trying to get the show banned because they said they were trying to get it censored and everything else. And our drama school that we were at at the time thought. We'll have some of that publicity. <laughs> yeah. so they, they put on this production of a German classical piece called um, Spring Awakening by uh, Babykind, Franz, Franz Babykind. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And um, we played, it was all about school kids and it was about censorship and the dangers of censorship. Mm -hmm. But the play had, um, just to belittle it, had um, a, a shower scene with masturbation in yeah. it. Um, had a buggery scene in it, yes. had lots of nudity. Yes. We played gay lovers, uh, Ernst and Melchior, who are actually in the in the script. Yeah, oh, yeah. I see. Um, I see. It's, it's a wonderful piece, it's a wonderful yeah. play, but they kind of took it to the extreme. <laughs> they, yeah. It was like, yeah. I guess the, the, they there were plays like that, like Equ Equus. Yeah, uh, that's right, another one they used to do. Yeah, well, like, and Equus is, is like, you know, he just happens to be naked. This was sex. Yeah. This mm -hmm. was rape. This yeah. was... Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. 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 <laughs> if you get the chance to sit, they made a musical of it recently. Didn't they did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No! Yeah. Seriously, yeah. Yeah. very yeah. popular yeah. musical yeah. Spring Awakening. Yeah. Yeah. Very it's successful it's musical great Spring Awakening. Men dancing it's about <laughs> how censorship can go horribly wrong. Mm -hmm. And if you censor too much, too much, these children knew nothing about mm -hmm. sex right. at all. And so because they, they knew nothing going about the sex, wrong way about they, well, they started mm -hmm. experimenting because nobody had, would talk to them about it because everybody right. was so conservative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And ended up one of them getting pregnant and then was being stigmatized by the, the, the parents. Right. Uh, you remember is so. All I remember was actually having an eight minute speech. Right. I just had <laughs> to remember two, you know, two and a half pages mm -hmm. of, of, of just. I can't even remember any of it. You were Skim pregnant. the cream is the only line I remember. <laughs> Skim yeah. the cream. Yeah. <laughs> And then my Why mother, and then my me? mother coming to watch it. Uh, <laughs> I thought I'd do the production again after I graduated. The professional production at the uh, the Young Vic in London. Right, right. I had a the same part. Uh, yes, I think Melchior? I played a professor, and I, yes, I think I did play Melchior again. Yes, weird. Mm -hmm. Nick, are you planning to make another volume to uh, follow other people's darkness? Yes, um, I was talking about this the other day. I've got probably about another half a dozen stories, all of which are Wonderful. about a third or two thirds of the way. I really need to finish at least one of them. Um, <laughs> so yeah, they're kind of bubbling away. Um, I've actually I've started writing uh, again and doing some other projects as well. Um, so yes, that, there is a plan and it's kind of really well overdue now. Wonderful, looking forward to that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank be you. another uh, moment to have you on our podcast to talk about it. Mm, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's been a couple of years now. It's been a lot more than a couple of years. Uh, it's what? 2013, it's nearly five years. Oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's at least four or five Where years. Where does the time go? I don't know. <laughs> Barbie, you and Doug Bradley have announced that an audiobook of The Venus Complex is coming out, right? Yeah. Um, how's that going, and how soon can we expect to hear Doug uh, uh, perform the creepy inner voice of Professor Michael Friday? Well, I, I'm... I, well, I, it's it's funny because um, he mentioned that he he'd read it out to his partner, who's a sculptress. Mm -hmm. And I went, gosh, I would have loved to heard you read my book. And he said, we've got to talk about that. And he's done obviously his, his spine chillers sequence mm -hmm. um, series of of audio books, which Guillermo de Toro thought was remarkable, and he's won the awards for it. So he is very very um, he knows the world. And so uh, we tweaked the story a little bit, so he's had some of his formative years in England because I didn't, I loved his, 
the, his mm. voice and um, with his accent. Uh, but if he's talking, you know, as an American character, he, he you know, does that accent um, wonderfully. It's magnificent. He's doing a wonderful job. And it's, I can't tell you, I suppose it's, you know, the next step is to see your words up on the silver screen, but to have an actor like Doug interpreting my disgustingly <laughs> sick yeah. diary of a yeah. serial killer yeah. story. It is uncomfortable um, <laughs> to read. Well, no, it's funny yeah. because my husband used to pop in and say, hey, Dolly, what are you doing? And I'd be all pink. <laughs> <laughs> Another girl dead. <laughs> you know, great, you know. But, it, it, you know, I get embarrassed. You, you say you get sort of yeah. queasy looking at certain scenes you've written. But I just think, oh, you know, I'm just this little, little gal from Canada. How can I come up with this sick shit? Mm. Uh, but it's just so wonderful because his <laughs> interpretation is, is absolutely magnificent. It's and wonderful. is there any chance we can expect a audiobook of Voices of the Damned in the future? Well, I'd love that. Yeah, I'd that would love be great. That. I'm writing another Sister Celise story because oh, you, you've got her her origin story, the female Cenobite story. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got her creating her own box, mm -hmm. and then you've got her rebellion of in hell. This is before I read Scarlet. Gospel, right, and right. um, all the female Cenobites decide we just have so over with the big guy, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> they, they uh, <laughs> over it. And this is, but it all goes hideously wrong. Uh, but this is her repopulating hell with her own infernal spawn. Oh, I see. After the last after story and we hell read, is oh. dead and gone, and right. she's the only one right. left, and and then she starts giving birth to, and they coming through her eyelids and, and her eye ducts, and you know. Yeah, hell spawn. Hell spawn, and um, uh, so th there's that story, and then I'm also writing a ghost story, more like a real life thing, not particularly horror genre, but it is real life horror. A short and, story, or uh, could be a novel. Brilliant. And finally, it's I gotta finish Zoo Zombies the script. Mm. Yes, and get yeah. Michael Caine to do the audio. <laughs> yeah. Michael is <laughs> the part there, Tolly, <laughs> yeah. uh, for you, and. Um, uh, and also, I think there, there may be a possibility that my other short horror story, Pollock, which is possibly one of the most disgusting, I mean, I keep saying the word disgusting, mm. it but is. Um, it is, but it may be a graphic novel. But it's oh, such oh a wonderful, gosh. dark humor, yes. humorous story. Yeah. yeah, it is wonderful. Yeah, unfortunately, there's, there's a lot to Pollock. But it, it is to colonoscopies as Jaws was to swimming in the ocean. <laughs> 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 Can I use that? <laughs> That's just a, a great, yeah. a great thing. But by the way, Zulu Zombies is is just this this guy who was at Rourke's Drift, like the movie, and he's haunted by zombies. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden, it's modern day the UK. And there are all these people who are just possessed by the spirits yes. of Zulu zombies. Yeah. Swimming in the ocean is something that actually people do pleasurably, though. You yeah. go for right. a colonoscopy. It's not a pleasure. <laughs> hey, it depends on, you know, yes. what you're Hey, interested. kids, let's go for a colonoscopy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The drugs are good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's true. That's, that's, the, really, that's, yeah, that's, really that's the movie. Six teenagers going for a colonoscopy yeah. party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I remember oh, in the eighties. Sorry, completely off topic. Yeah. They used to have enema parties. Oh, oh really? Ew. It's kind of a cleanse you thing. Very strange. Why? Place. I know me. <laughs> As part of a cleanse therapy thing. Oh yeah. yeah. The, uh, let's oh, do gosh. a colonic irrigation. They were shit. They were shit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anything else I can? Anything else that I can um, shamelessly plug? I think that's it, really. Actually, I forgot one okay. because of um, Hellraiser Anthology Volume Two has got yes. the yes. origin story of the Chatra. Yeah, yeah. yeah it does with uh, Jim and Seth and uh, uh, Mr. Sylvanus. So, Sylvanus. Sylvanus. Yeah. 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 And yeah. Uh, that kind of reminded me a little bit of Spring Awakening. In a yes. Way. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank enough. you. That was yeah. the follow-up I was going to do. Uh, yes. I, guess, <laughs> I, I, I have that ready in my backpack for you to decide. Ah, cool. <laughs> yes. Yeah. A couple of you know, it's, So that's that's a, a fantastic story about. Um, uh, the origins of Chatter. You had written the previous one called Luke C. that came mm. out in the theater. And how, it, it's like, um, what was like revisiting the story? What made you want to revisit the story? I was asked. 
Um, I, uh, well, actually, no, yeah, somebody suggested I might like to do yeah. it, and I thought, actually, having look see was a, done as a joke, and yeah. actually, an angry response to discovering I was going to be a little boy uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 after I yeah. died and held up. But then, over the years, literally, it kind of like more and more fascinating, particularly as people ask, it's like, it's the fascinating idea of how did a little boy end up in hell and grow up in hell. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, you know, this, this idea that a, a, you know, a kid grew up in hell and how does that somebody that young looking end up in hell? I remember a response from the editor who said, Nick, I love this, I actually found it really difficult to read. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. So, oh, good. But but it, it made more sense. It made mm. more sense just because of what you said. It, and it it's a more um, there's a little bit more interesting. Uh, it's it's a more dramatic version than being uh, a comedian. Mm. Uh, yeah. A comedian that uh, uh, ends up Talks becoming his namesake, the Chatterer, yeah, because Chatterer that was his nickname yeah. in the movies, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And then at the end, he gives a warning to Clive Barker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't like what you do with us. Funnily enough, I, I, did, I did a limited edition of those, uh, which I'm going to be putting up on the web shop for, uh, in about a week's time. Uh, I still got some of the limited edition. Um, it'd be interesting to look at Look See again. Um, and mm -hmm. there's a copy of the short story Beauty. The, uh, the Beast and the Beauty, uh, which is in the first volume, Hot Monsters Do, as right. well. But that's again, it's the, the original story. That was inspired um, by uh, John Bolton. I've been inspired by John Bolton. Th th that's one of the things I've always loved about in writing stories is taking images but finding stories and then adding a narration, mm -hmm. taking a moment and then trying to work out how did that, you know, what happened up to that moment and then as a result of that moment. Right. There's always been a great way of finding inspiration as well. So, Paul, you have a new project lined up for release in October called Sick for Toys. I do. Yeah. What, what, what can you tell us about that feature? Well, it's um, it's Christmas themed, and it's mm -hmm. a horror film about a very twisted brother and sister who live alone in this house. And um, every Christmas, the brother gets his sister a new toy, and the toy is male, always a male adult, and she plays with the toy until it breaks. And she breaks yeah. it. <laughs> it's, it's really twisted. It's very twisted. And, and um, this What's is the story it called again? I'm sorry. Sick for Toys. Mm -hmm. Do you write and direct? In, huh? What's your role? In one um, very brief flashback scene, I am uncle. Right. And I am partially the reason why this boy has grown up to be this, this brother. It has some, some sexual issues. So it's uh, just some twisted general uncle. issues. Yeah, twisted yeah. uncle. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And this was practically just announced yesterday as the Facebook and Twitter pages went up. But uh, Little Spark Film's very own Joe Manco is here with us. And shadow <laughs> writer Paul Kane are writing um, The Torturer, right? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I have to have a card. Yeah. He's got cards. Yes. What so, can you guys tell us about that? Uh, oh, me? I'm behind the camera. <laughs> uh, Paul Kane Either. from England. Yes. Paul Kane wrote it, and uh, a shadow writer. I'm yeah. gonna be in it, and uh, Joe's he, the yeah, He's gonna play Andy Brooks, and it's, he's gonna get. I'm sorry, Paul, but it's you're gonna go through a lot. I'm gonna go through a lot. Here. I should probably lose weight. Just, yeah, <laughs> how could you? Um, uh, <laughs> there's you. nothing there. There's nothing. No, no, no. Paul Kane did the uh, audio play adaptation I referred to earlier. Apple Gabs adaptation. Yeah, yeah. 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 he's getting yeah. amazing reviews. And he's written, yeah. he's written two books about Hellraiser. He's kind of yeah. he's kind of a he's resident the Hellraiser the, expert. The Meister oh. Stuck, the Maven <laughs> Master, not yeah. Maven. I am a Maven. Yeah. Try to be a Maven. Yeah. The the expert, the Hellraiser yeah. expert. Yeah. So. Yes. Is there yeah. any more questions you'd like to ask? Uh, I have know? some questions for Simon, and and that will be it. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, if so. I sneak away, I can take that camera off. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to get ready for the scene. Sounds good. Right? It yeah. was really yeah. great to have you here with us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank okay. you. Thank you very much indeed. And guys. Bertie is a great actress. Bertie, actor. 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 Bertie, this is up, my dog. Um, yeah, oh. he steals every scene and every <laughs> heart oh, he's in. Yeah. Thanks. I shall see you all good later on, guys. Right. Thank, thank you. See you all later. Thank you. Um, so, Simon, you have uh, a few movies uh, that you've done recently, and one yes. of them is still in kind of production. Well, there, there was funnily enough Paul Kane again. I did mm -hmm. um, Confidence, Confidence for Paul Kane, where I shaved my head and had a bright yellow goatee. 
which was quite an experience. They've um, used that for the yes. Frightmare Weekend they poster. They did use it, right? yeah. I and people were confused. Think. Yeah, people yeah. were like, who is that? Right. Yeah, yeah, it, it, does, it, cool. yeah. it looks, you look so different. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was a really interesting uh, job because I was playing a therapist who works with a group of people to build up their confidence, hence mm -hmm. the name of the film. Um, and he kind of really goes at this one guy who's taking the course and the guy starts having flashbacks and he has a flashback to his, uh, I that's right, that's kind of <laughs> <a> flashback, <laughs> I'm having one now. <laughs> uh, he has a flashback to his father and his father was kind of slightly abusive to his mother and then he has another flashback to his school days and uh, he had a very abusive uh, teacher and I played not only the therapist, but also the father and also the teacher. Mm -hmm. So we started me with a full head of hair and a great big full beard. And I can't remember which one we shot first. I think we played the father. Mm -hmm. We shot all of those scenes. And then we cut down the beard to... Oh, no, no, we started that with the, with the teacher, slicked back teacher, hair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, filled, filmed all of that on a full beard. And then we, we cut up half the moustache, so it was just a goatee. And, but kept the hair really big to play the... Uh, the father and the abusive scenes, and then we shaved my head completely right. once we'd finished all of those scenes and, uh, and dyed the goatee yellow for the others. Wow. Um, it was great. There's great, there's a great script from Paul Kane. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, like a lot of scripts I seem to be getting at the moment, um, it was tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of dialogue, just endless, endless speeches, huge, huge speeches. And I always thought with film that it was more about what you see and the actions, but no, Everything I seem to get at the moment is about words. just vast amount of dialogue. <laughs> so, yeah, we did that one, and then I had another one with vast amount of dialogue, which was the uh, documentary for Friday Night. Night. Mm. Where you played Peter Vincent. Peter Vincent, yeah. Right? And, 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 uh, you're in a few fake trailers like Werewolf of Moldavia <laughs> and I'll Rip we, Your Jugular. We had a great fun. They, thought, yeah. they were looking for something they thought looked a little bit like um, Roddy McDowell, and they said that they mm. thought I did, and they had mm. Roddy McDowell's live cast. So. Oh. Um, so they, they, they created this um, prosthetic for me to make me look more like him and I've heard of him for a while. Yeah. But again, it was endless, 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 endless speeches right. of the most difficult kind because it was all people who were in the cast, facts, figures, dates, um, the, the, third, the name of the kind of third assistant's brother's aunt and the date that she lived and um, what she did on the film right. and trying to make it entertaining. So that was kind of interesting. And because of that, they, they asked me to do uh, the offer. Well, they, they wanted us all to do the offer. And then they offered me uh, a very awesome. lovely part <laughs> in part two, which, again, is, is very much like an Alan Bennett um, monologue. Uh, uh, and then this character just talks to camera an awful lot and, and, and then kind of talks about her life. Yeah, the next on. episodes are Mrs. Wiltshire and Finders Keepers, right? Finders Keepers is the one I'm growing the moustache for at the moment. We're doing right. that in a couple of weeks. I, I was privileged enough to see <clears throat> some excerpts of Mrs. Wiltshire, and I have to say that... It's a fantastic tour de force, right? Lucida mm -hmm. and Bamford is... Yeah, without is any Mrs. spoilers. A bit, just bit really uh, a magnificent performance. But thank you very much. Thank it you. Is, I'll give is. you the money That's later. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Rob's not here, but he wanted to ask you a couple of things I mentioned before the interview that he's been listening to shock music, like Dynamo Beat and all that. Okay. So he because I forgot to bring my postcard, so <laughs> somebody was so. Yeah. Okay. It helps some of the directors. He wants to oh, know yeah. okay. how was it to uh, work with the director of that Ultravox music video? Oh, Russell Mackay. Yes, yes. Because he did Highlander. Mm -hmm. He went on to do Highlander, which is very groovy. But right. just to go back, this is what I look like um, back in the day. Back in the. I uh, don't know if you can get. <laughs> That's, that's oh, there it is. I've yeah. got I don't know which camera I'm going for, <laughs> but I had blue hair. <laughs> and um, but at that time, so what was the the? Yeah, uh, the question was. I what Russell, was it yeah. like working with director Russell McKay? Well, it was for a single called "Passing Strangers." Uh -huh. It was by Ultravox. It was the song they had out before Vienna, which got to number two. I think "Passing Strangers" got to number twelve or something, and we just had to spend. This guy called Sean Crawford and I spent all day running mm -hmm. through Becton Gas Works, where, funnily enough, they shot 
Full Metal Jacket. Oh. Uh, I think about a year later. Mm. It was when the Tet Offensive was being filmed. Mm. And it's just this, we sort of wake up as robots and then we just run. <laughs> right. And uh, Mitchell is in the background going, Passing strangers, you know, we're just running, 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 <laughs> running, running. Yeah. And then we get sucked into the ground and we, oh no, we don't get sucked into the ground. What happened? We were You're, running away from the yeah, Phoenix Yeah, you fall into a crater or something. No, yeah. we, it, we, we got sucked in, and because we were sort of standing there, we had to come out. Uh -huh. It was a reverse shot. Yeah. My legs had gone to sleep. And so I was oh. like going, because <laughs> I'm actually <laughs> laughing because I'm falling over <laughs> because my legs were asleep. And then we, we pop out, and we're running like puck, basically, and yeah. the tree explodes. And the guy came, who rigged the tree, Russell, was not happy that the tree exploded with enough fury and force. Mm -hmm. And so the guy came and said, listen, when you hear that click, don't listen for Russell. When you hear a click, just run like fuck. Mm -hmm. And I said, what if we don't? He said, you don't want to ask that. You don't even want to think that. Right. And when I saw the footage, it was, it was one of those fucking Ada moments. Yeah. What was he thinking of? Mm, but they don't right. care. They're tractors. Uh, <laughs> oh, it looked a pretty flush. Oh. Um, but no, it was. Um, sorry, I'm really jet lagged. That was probably a bit weird what I just did there. But no, it was great. He's a lovely man. He was really sweet. Mm -hmm. He was a friend of a friend. Um, Peter Lilly, who was also in shock very briefly. She's a very talented mind artist. Um, she was in the Buggles video, Video Killed the Radio Star. She's the oh, girl in the dome. Oh, wow. And she kills the geezer in Vienna. She's the, oh, you mean nothing to me. She's the blonde, uh -huh. beautiful blonde killing the guy yeah. in, in things. So she was like, oh, you know, they're all Australian. You got to get down and watch Barbie and Sean do the robot, you know. <laughs> so um, he loved it. He said, listen, I really love you to, to be in the movie. Yeah. I mean, in the video. Mm -hmm. So that was that. But we did all sorts of crazy things in the 80s. We supported Gary Newman, Adam right. and the Ants, mm -hmm. Ultra Fox. So and his last a bright question, and shining era. Yeah, his it's last question work. was who uh, was responsible for making your outfits? Oh, um, Jane Kahn and Patty Bell. Oh. Kahn and Bell, K-A-H-N. Mm -hmm. They were from Birmingham. Okay. And um, I should stop trying to do the accent. <laughs> they did a lot it? of stuff for Duran Duran. They knew all of the Duran Duran oh, guys. Right. And But we, they had a little stall in um, Great Gear Market, or no, it was something like King's Road Market. We walked in and went, oh, it's beautiful clothing. We must wear them. You must dress us. For her. And that's what they did. Wonderful. And um, it's all, I still have one dress. You do? Oh, yeah. awesome. Perfect. But, you know, because the, the nature of it, the brilliant designs, but the, the materials weren't silk or anything like that. It was all lycra. It was the, the 80s. So. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, everybody, yeah. for being here with us and, and being so generous with your time. Well, thank you for and chatting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a lovely it, time. It's a wonderful pleasure to have you here. Brian, yeah. So I hope to see you again thank at the you. convention floor soon. Thank okay. you. Cool. And I love your T-shirts, your Clyde Barker. <laughs> oh, those, those are great. Cool. Yeah. 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 So cool. Look at that. We just got these about an hour ago. Oh. <laughs> and thank you to Little Spark Films for doing this. Yes. Yeah. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. You guys rule. <laughs>